Okay, boys, all cameras 100. John's is 100. Safety's 100. John's 100. Alright, Kai, all cameras and safety 100. Ready for 10. Copy that, 10 seconds. Three, two, one, dropping. One there, one there. This is medic five currently inbound. My name is Kai Jones. I grew up in Jackson Hole, and uh, Jackson is a, is a special place, and there's so much great terrain. It's super accessible. You can get in anything from powder lanes to repelling yourself off the Grand Teton. Nice work. Yeah. It's a crazy place. We've seen a, an increase in, in people pushing further uh, due to the popularity of backcountry skiing, backcountry riding. We are receiving more and more calls for that, and the popularity is, is, is overwhelming. I think just because the Jackson Hole backcountry has become so accessible and traveled, people think it's safe and controlled, but it's, it's raw and untamed out there. And, things go wrong all the time and that's why it's really important to have the right equipment, the right knowledge and the right team. Avalanches kill more people than any other natural hazard on public land. That's even more than wildfire. So it isn't an insignificant threat. In terms of avalanche safety, the absolute minimum equipment that people should have when they go in the field is a beacon, shovel and a probe. And none of that gear does any good without regular training. 16. Whoa. Every single year we spend a week going through avalanche training with IPRW, refreshing our memory. We need rescuers over here. You should be out trying to set up scenarios that are realistic and challenging and we should do that regularly. People need to take classes to kind of further their knowledge, whether that's a, an avalanche course or a wilderness first aid, wilderness first responder course, to be able to stabilize their riding group or their skiing group until search and rescue can get there. Making sure that you're carrying the right gear when you go out is super important, right? So avalanche beacon, probe, shovel, some way to make fire. I like to have some sort of shelter. It's usually a, a tarp and a communication device. So an in-reach or some sort of two-way communication rather than just your cell phone. Do I have the necessary resources to bed down for the night? You can go into hypothermia really quickly. And once you do that, your ability to think constructively goes out the window. Throughout the winter, we're always looking at the AVI reports and the weather and picking and choosing the right days just to be safe. Bridger Teton Avalanche Center is a resource for the public to use as a backcountry decision-making tool. We run daily forecasts through the winter, 160, I believe, last year. I think it's really important for people to realize just how quick conditions on the ground can change from rapid warming to more snowfall than you expect or more wind. So it's really important to return to that forecast, look at it every day, look at the observations every day, see what other people are seeing in the field. You really want to gather as much information as you can before going in the field because that can save your life.
you have to be careful and take the right precautions and, and be humbled to the mountains. The culture in Jackson is surreal. Everyone is so fired up to be in the mountains and there's this huge local crowd that is going after it every day, like 6 a.m. tram line. We've got a lot more backcountry use than we've had in the past. So we see, we see more backcountry incidents. People just need to be a lot more aware when they're traveling in those areas that the avalanche hazard is gonna be different than what it is in the resort. Uh, the other thing that comes up is our duty to respond. And technically, if an incident happens outside the resort boundary, it's Teton County Search and Rescue's responsibility. And if it's to the north, it's in the park, and it's the Park Service's responsibility to respond. We have an MOU, we have a, a memorandum of understanding with them to provide manpower if we can, and we oftentimes do. But if it's a busy weekend or if conditions don't allow, we won't send personnel out in the field. The problem with living here for a long time is that you can develop that expert halo, right? Where, hey, I've done it all, I've seen it all, but we haven't, right? We don't always see, you know, see what's coming and things change. Typically when we respond to incidents outside the gates, it's due to a lack of situational awareness knowing where they're going and what they're doing and how they're gonna get back and what things to bring with them. So it, it all kind of comes under that same heading though of situational awareness or lack of that. You know, the, the biggest piece is, is what you're carrying in your head. Jackson attracts a lot of really good skiers and accomplished backcountry travelers. But just because you see someone going out the gate, don't assume that you should be going where they're going and don't follow tracks because that can get you in trouble really fast. Out of bounds at the village or the Glory Boot Pack or South of Pass, like it's easy, it's accessible to get there, but it is still a backcountry environment. If you get injured there, it can take hours to get you out. You know, we've done rescues on Shivers Ridge where you can see the auxiliary lot and we still need a helicopter to get you out. My name is Don Lawless. I am the Avalanche Supervisor for the Wyoming Department of Transportation. So Teton Pass throughout the winter time is quite a challenge to keep open. We see upwards of 10,000 vehicles that go over that pass. That's 10,000 people who are trying to get to work or getting home to their families. I don't know that a lot of people really understand how hazardous it is being on the side of a highway during the middle of a snowstorm. Probably 70 to 80 percent of the time uh, there's plows up there. Plows can't always see you very well, but you can always hear them coming. If you can get up onto the snowbank, it's better for everybody. One of the sort of troubling areas for us is, is Teton Pass, especially in the mornings. It's super important to remember that you know, don't ski cut the sides of the roads because it potentially could slide into the road, which puts everybody at harm's way. Being respectful, your fellow skiers and riders up there, you know, keep your dogs on leashes. Try to stay out of the road, especially when visibility is, is poor. Periods of low light or low visibility, even a skilled person sort of forget that that road cut that you're on could deposit a significant amount of snow onto the road and possibly onto a passing car. So take some time, be respectful of your surroundings, be respectful of other people, pay attention to the terrain below you, and if there's other people in that terrain. We've got to share these resources, you know, and uh, let's work together. Taking the snowmobiles out adds a whole nother layer of 
safety when you're when you're out in the backcountry you have these huge massive machines that you're side hilling up attached to this huge machine that can fall on you it's really important to like take the right steps when using these machines because they can't help and hurt you sleds these days technology all of these things everything has changed to allow the user regardless of experience level, to be in some pretty crazy, pretty challenging terrain. And you don't have to have a whole lot of skill set to be there. I mean, these things are, they're rocket ships. It's just amazing how fast and how far we can go. Like you are so far in the middle of nowhere. Even something that's a relatively small you know, situation can turn into something a lot larger and can even be life-threatening. There's an incredible um, community of skilled riders in this area, and there's a lot of people with much less experience out on these sleds. These sleds can take you right into the belly of the beast, right up from the bottom into the biggest avalanche paths you've ever seen. Basically, you're riding your sled up the barrel of the gun, you know, and good to assume that it's loaded. I don't like hearing that people are out riding by themselves. That's certainly in, in terms of safety, like there's so many little things that can happen that can leave you stranded out there. And on a snowmobile, they can go sideways in a, in a hurry. Easy to start to feel a little less vulnerable when you're on a sled because you got a throttle under you. And uh, these avalanches can take a sled right down the slope along with you. Don't want to get lulled into thinking that you know, you're know you less vulnerable because you're on a sled. <laughs> Holy <laughs> avalanche, huge. Just came down, I pulled my chute, didn't work. I heard Hunter yelling and here he is. You okay, bud? Nobody wants to ride on a whooped out groom trail. Everybody wants to get away from those orange poles, ride through the trees and, and just go adventure. So let's all do it responsibly. Let's all do it safely. And let's go have a freaking blast because that's what the whole point is. Three, two, one, dropping. <sighs> Let's go! Are you kidding me? Oh, <laughs> how is it so so good? Good? <laughs> Social media is an interesting animal, right? Because you get to see some of these incredible lines and you get to see these amazing athletes and you get to see this community at its peak. The problem is what you don't see is all the time and energy and education that a lot of these people have put into it. Oh my God. Social media has definitely gave people this false sense of security because they've been able to see other people's skiing lines, but we put so much into assessing the snow conditions our terrain selection, and making the right calls when it comes to pushing in the backcountry. The big productions that you see that make skiing look amazing, what you don't see is behind the lens, they have an entire safety crew and they have people there to, to help them if it goes wrong, but not the general public, they don't have that. And so they're trying to do replicate these same images without that backup or that safety net. And so, being mindful of what you're seeing on social media and being mindful of what you're posting on social media could have some actual impact on, on your community. 13, 14. Oh my God, did you see that? Reporting observations is critically important. Under the observations section of the website, we have places where people can submit field reports, whether it's pictures of avalanches, um, videos of a snow pit they made, or simply just a written description of, hey, I triggered an avalanche, it's rowdy out there. We didn't get the best results, so I think we're gonna head back to the car and get home safely. You know, as a community, we, we need to help each other out. And I think it's also really important if you trigger an avalanche, there's no shame in it. If you ski around in the backcountry, snowboard, or ride long enough, you're gonna trigger an avalanche. Oh, oh. Oh, oh.
It's amazing how this community can shame people that, that make these mistakes. And I always think that's interesting because we learn more as a community. So if we make a mistake, whether it falls under the expert halo or not, like reporting that is gonna not only advance kind of that education piece, but it might give somebody else pause and say, ooh, geez, I was planning on going there and maybe I won't. December 29th of 2021, it was the first riding clinic of our season and I had four people in a runout zone. And I was so focused on killer snow, killer sleds, and you know, and customer experience, and the guys could ride. It wasn't that I brought a bunch of new people into it. It's just when that avalanche happened, man, it was, there's not a whole lot of places for people to go. It went into one spot. And did I report it? And the answer is absolutely. Embarrassing moments as a guide and just embarrassing moments as a human. Um, it was really tough. It was really difficult. And it was, you know, there, there were signs. There were, there were a lot of red flags that day that should have led any avalanche professional to stay away from some specific areas. And I put myself and my customer experience in front of those things. We are wide awake. And I'm just telling all of you, this is as real as it gets. The coolest dang thing about being motorized between snow bikes and snowmobilers we don't ever get to really have a bad day. We can go out and go have so much fun on those low angle slopes and stay out of harm's way, away from mother nature's wrath. It's just whether or not you're gonna listen to that forecast, listen to the rest of your group, and then understand yourself that I can go ride to ride another day. Even if you're taking all the right steps, things can go wrong. I had an extremely freak accident that happened because of my age and the way my growth plates were healing. I remember looking down the line, not thinking much of it because it's a line I've done before. It's a line I'm super comfortable with. And I skied the line exactly how I envisioned. I took uh, the exact turns and did the exact pop that I wanted to. And right when I landed, broke both my legs and tumbled, tearing both my meniscuses. I remember finally stopping after tumbling and being in the most immense pain of my entire life. I was just completely throttled. We ended up going into a huge rescue operation. We had to call search and rescue. They got the heli to us. I see kind of where it's hurting here, okay? They're so professional and they're so dialed that they brought the long line straight to me, hit me with the pain medication, got me in the short haul rig, took me to the parking lot, got me an ambulance, and so I was super fortunate. You're gonna be fine, all right? So we're seeing people push further and further into the backcountry, pushing bigger lines, and the severity of the injuries are greater. And there are times that weather windows don't allow us to fly. Maybe the avalanche danger is high that we can't get people in right away. So we encourage people to, to be mindful of that and really work on companion rescue and stabilization. They are out there helping people every day at the call of a phone and so, so thankful for them words can't even describe. The resort has this great saying uh, when you ride the tram and everybody screams it at the top, which is if you don't know, don't go. That is a really good saying. If you don't have enough knowledge or have no idea how you're going to help yourself if you get injured, you should hold on and either get more education or go somewhere else where the consequences aren't as high. The whole idea of backcountry safety and what we're dealing with, why we still see so many dang fatalities out there. The training is available, the gear is available. There is so much of this that is right there at your fingertips. So we have to practice with this stuff. And again, practice will never ever make us perfect, but it will certainly make us more prepared.